Welcome to The Pulse, where we delve deep into the issues and ideas that are shaping the future of education. I'm your host, Rick Cernsey, Superintendent of the Putnam County School District, and each week we'll be talking to teachers, administrators, and other experts in the field about the latest trends, best practices, and most pressing concerns in education. Whether you're a teacher, a parent, or just someone who cares about education, this podcast is for you. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the pulse. Welcome back to our podcast. I'm Rick Cernsey, Superintendent of Schools for the Putnam County School District. And I'm very honored to have two of our staff members here from the district office today to meet with us, uh, Renee and Jonathan. And we're going to talk about the graduation rate, which uh, has been a, a subject that we've talked about for a number of years and uh, we've seen some success in. But I think there needs to be further detail about, you know, what is the graduation rate and how do you calculate it and uh, so on. So we'll hear a lot about that. And um, what I want to do first is just have both of you introduce yourself briefly and, and um, what you do and, you know, any background information you think would be helpful for our viewers today. So, Renee? Renee Lamoureux, I am the Director of Assessment and Accountability. I'm born and raised Palaka girl here. Um, taught many years in our elementary schools, was an assistant principal, and now at the district level. Welcome, Renee. Jonathan? Yeah, I'm Jonathan Hinkey. I'm the Executive Director of Strategic Initiatives. Um, I've been working in Putnam County since 2015 and uh, was one of the people uh, at the very beginning that helped create our graduation initiative um, way back then. And so excited to be here today to talk a little bit about graduation rates and and where we're at. Welcome, Jonathan. And Jonathan, Jonathan, I always kid him, he comes to us from the great state of Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And I know this cold weather that we experience is <laughs> nothing to him, but right. we uh, we appreciate him being with us. And there's been some great things happening in Putnam County over the last few years. And I think we, uh, we've we seen some tremendous growth in the number of students who have graduated on time. So, and we, we refer to them as our graduation cohort. Okay, so there's some terms here that we might need some clarification. So, Renee, talk to us about what is a graduation cohort of students and how is that, how is a cohort uh, built? So, DOE refers to a cohort as a group of students. So and DOE is a Department of Education. Correct. The state. So, when students come into ninth grade, day one, they are in the ninth grade cohort, and DOE expects that cohort of students to graduate on time four Mm -hmm. years later. Mm -hmm. And of course, kids come and go. Mm -hmm. So that cohort is always fluid. And once they graduate, then we start looking at what a numerator is, which is your graduates, Mm -hmm. and your denominator, which is the kids who are in the cohort throughout that four-year period. Right. So whenever they start ninth grade at a particular school or in a district, Mm -hmm. the clock ticks. That's right. And if they go to another district, then they would not be part of that particular cohort wherever they, is that correct? They would come out of our cohort if they go somewhere else in Florida. Right. Or out of state, they come out of our cohort. Okay. And as new kids come in, they come into our cohort. So you talk about uh, the the denominator. What what are some factors, and you kind of alluded to that, that would influence or impact the denominator of students? Yeah, just, just that, what we talked about. It's the denominator is always fluid throughout the four years as kids come in, kids withdraw, they could go to private school, they could go out of Florida, they could go to other districts within Florida. All of those reasons, they would come out of our cohort, our denominator. And I know it's really important. One of the things we we looked at with the graduation rate initiative is really capturing that data to make sure the data was correct. Right. So that's that's extremely important. Right. So and there, there are a lot of mm-hmm. um, different withdrawal codes. I don't mm-hmm. know. There's what Renee, maybe two dozen or so, easily of different withdrawal codes of understanding exactly the situation for every student. Right. And so, that is important for not only the district data specialists to understand, but for all of our data clerks to understand at schools, so mm-hmm. that we accurately portray exactly how students are entering a cohort or withdrawing from a cohort. Yeah. So when they when they leave and withdraw. We really need to know where they end up. That's right. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah. we talked about the denominator. Let's talk about the numerator and how that's calculated, Jonathan. Yeah. So, 
I think it's really important for people to understand that in the state of Florida, there are multiple options for a student to earn a standard high school diploma. And those are outlined. Um, DOE puts out documents called academic advisement documents for each cohort of mm -hmm. students as different legislation changes. Um, but those options for students, uh, there's this kind of standard 24 credit option that people are familiar with. Uh, but then there's also the Advanced International Certificate of Education curriculum, or the ACE, the Cambridge ACE um, diploma. And um, that, as you know, is something that we uh, offer students here mm -hmm. in Putnam County at um, QI Roberts Junior Senior, as well as Crescent City Junior Senior. Um, there's an IB curriculum diploma, which we don't offer here, but that is an, uh, an option in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. and then there's the 18-credit um, academically challenging curriculum in, to enhance learning option um, that students sometimes choose, uh, especially if they want to be like an early graduate or something like that. And then there's also a, a career and technical education CT pathway. And all of those are options to earn a standard high school diploma in the state of Florida. And in addition to that, there are also um, legislative rules, state board rules that um, talk about the options for students with disabilities. So right. students who have an IEP, there are also some specific rules uh, where they can request a waiver mm. um, from an assessment. Um, that's a requirement for graduation. It's not a waiver from all of the requirements. It's just a waiver from the, the assessment portion. Um, so all of that is governed by Florida legislative um, statute, state board rules. Um, and one of the things that we do, well, most states follow is kind of the federal graduation guidelines mm -hmm. um, so that you can actually compare graduation rates across states. And so when we get a graduation rate um, for our district or for the state that is following the, the calculation rules that are the federal calculation rules. I know another option too, I don't know if you alluded to it, but the concordance scores that. Yeah, so that that is um, something that we wanna talk about because students can earn a standard diploma, um, but the way it's coded mm -hmm. is a little bit different and that's something Renee, I want her to talk about in a little bit because a student who earns um, a standard diploma might not have passed Algebra 1 the first time, might not have passed uh, English 10 the first time, which are mm -hmm. the two assessment requirements um, in the state of Florida. And so, yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay. There are different ways. And Renee can allude to that later. So. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that we thought would be helpful for people who are listening today is to maybe break down a graduation rate and talk specifically about the numbers and percent of students um, in each rate. So, um, you know, there's a lot of information here to unpack. So, you know, talk, talk about how the cohort denominators and the diploma options that you just mentioned, how does all that impact our district graduation rate? Can yeah. you kind of simplify that for me? Yeah. So I think... Um, We'll just take maybe the 2023 graduation rate and we'll break down the numbers for people. Uh, so Renee talked about, you know, how students get into a cohort denominator. And so in the 2023 cohort, we had 684 students who were in our cohort denominator. Mm -hmm. And of that number, 608 of them received and met all the requirements to receive a high school, a standard high school diploma. So there's a couple things then that leaves out 70 student, 76 students who did not meet the requirements for a standard diploma. Um, and so those 76, there are some reasons why. Um, one of the reasons is that we have 34 students who are considered still enrolled. That's 5%. Students who are still enrolled are students who just didn't meet all the requirements within that four-year expectation. Right. So they are still with us. They still want to earn a high school diploma. And so you could kind of consider them like fifth year seniors perhaps. Um, but those are students who still will earn it. They're just not gonna do it in that four year time period that's expected. Then we also had of that 76, we had 24 students who were coded as dropouts. Um, that was 3.5%. And then 2.6% of students are considered other non-graduates. That was 18 students. Um, those would be students that would be coded uh, for example, maybe that's a student who withdrew and went directly to adult education, and it was mm -hmm. coded that way. 
Or maybe it was a student who chose not to try to earn the diploma and just take a certificate of completion. Mm -hmm. That is considered a non-graduate. Right. You didn't earn a high school diploma. So if you think about the total uh, percentages uh, of those 684 students, our rate that graduated on time in four years with a high school diploma was 88.9%. If you add to that 5%, 3.5%, and 2.6%, you get 100%. So that's how we account for mm -hmm. all 684 students uh, that were in the denominator. Very very easy to understand when you put it that way. So let's go back and talk about the, the 608 students you were referring to, Jonathan, who earned their standard diplomas knowing that the Department of Education offers many of those standard diploma options that we just, that Jonathan outlined, what do our numbers look like for Putnam County okay. when you look at each of those options? So out of those 684, 608, as Jonathan said, met the requirements to get a standard diploma. And the Department of Education has a report called Graduation Pathways Report that breaks down how each of those 608 students earned the standard diploma. Um, it is important to keep in mind that all of our students who graduate earn a standard diploma, and that's according to Florida statute and state board rules. So when you look at our 608, 28% of ours met the requirements, 24 credits, they passed their Algebra one and their Grade 10 English exam. So people call that a standard way of graduating. Mm -hmm. Then we had 32.2% earn a standard diploma using a concordant or comparative score, which you talked about just a minute ago. Right. And what that is, is the Department of Education allows certain tests like the SAT or the ACT to take the place of that Algebra One mm -hmm. requirement or the Grade 10 English requirement. Now, those two tests, even though they're a comparative score, they are set at a college level criteria. Right. So when students graduate with a comparative score, it's at a college readiness level. So it's it's pretty stringent. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not anything easier by any means. And then we had 22.7% of our students with disabilities graduate with a standard diploma using a waiver, an assessment waiver. They take the assessments, the Algebra one and the Grade 10 English, but then they can get a waiver for that. And then finally, 17.1 of our students graduate in what they call other graduation options. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is this includes our Cambridge kids. Mm -hmm. So the 17.1% of other, we had 100 kids graduate with a Cambridge diploma, and that's where they fall into the category according to the Department of Education. So I think that's, that's a little surprising to a lot of people that that's where those kids fall, but that's where they are. So that's how our kids broke down into the different areas. You know, I kind of look at the different options just to simplify it is, you know, let's just say we're driving to Jacksonville. You know, one way to get to Jacksonville is go up 207 and hit 95, okay? Mm -hmm. That might be a standard way of doing it. Right. But you know what? There's a number of ways to get to Jacksonville right. and more than we can count. And I look at that in how we can earn a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. There's a number of ways to do it. And one is not any better than others. Right. It's just different options. Right. So I think uh, you really simplify that for us. And I think a lot of people, you know, look at one being better than the other. It's, it's really, they're all very stringent. Right. And, uh, they are very well stringent. Well said. You know, we, we wait each year and um, are very anxious to see what our graduation <laughs> rate is. And sometimes people ask me, why, why does it take so long after graduation? The ceremonies that take place in May, why does it take – the Department of Education so long to actually calculate the rates. So, Renee, what's the timeline for reporting this? I know, you know, people have a misunderstanding. We should know it right after they graduate. So right. what goes into that? Well, the good news is, is if we have students who don't complete their 24 credits or pass one of those two assessments, they actually have the summer mm -hmm. after graduation. They have up until the first day of the new school year to get that, and they would still count in our graduation rate, which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. So the Department of Education gives out deadlines for reporting data, and the graduation data goes on what we call Survey 4, which means it's a full year. It looks at the full year of the students. And so that data isn't due to the department until the end of October. 
by DOE guidelines. So we have until the end of October to get that data in and correct. Then they give us a period of time, and us being the district, um, to review our data that we've submitted, and if there was any changes, anything we saw that was reported one way or another, um, we have that chance to change that. And so then in December, we get one last look. So they give us, here's your graduates, Here's your non-graduates, and we get one last look to make any corrections we need. And once that deadline in December hits, it is finalized. Well, I, I have to say, I can ask Renee, almost down to the student, what what she's calculated our graduation rate to be, and it 100% of the time is going to be correct. So That's because kudos they, to you. And thank you. I know you really stay on top of each one of those. But um, So if someone's listening to our podcast right now, and they want more information about graduation rates and how they're calculated, and uh, they want to look at our rate, maybe compared to other districts, um, where could they find that information? Jonathan, where, where's a good place to find that? Um, well, the Florida Department of Education has a number of helpful documents um, on their website, and they also have some advanced reporting. Um, the graduate pathway pathways crosswalk that Renee mentioned, I think earlier, is is a good one because you know we said there are maybe a couple dozen withdrawal codes, and then each of the codes that are used either helps you understand you know do, are students coded a dropout, are they student are they coded non graduates, but also when they do graduate with a standard diploma, what is the code used to represent how that was done? Right? Was right. it a student that, for example, completed the ACE curriculum and graduated mm -hmm. with an ACE diploma, and those are coded differently than mm -hmm. a student who, you know, completed just the standard 24 credit option. So right. that document kind of helps people understand exactly all the different codes and how they might be used. Um, but the department also has on their website, like academic advisement, um, documents that are real easy for parents and students to understand, to kind of really understand, you know, it's not just about passing the two assessments, but there are lots of requirements, GPA credits, certain courses and assessments you have to take um, for each of the different options. And so that's listed there. Uh, but then there are also some advanced reporting um, features where you can look at not just the 2023 one that we broke down, um, but look at past cohorts mm -hmm. um, and see historically what were the different breakdowns of our data um, and where we've, you know, come because we've come a long way since 2014, 15, 16 school years right. um, in really working to get our students to graduate on time with their standard diploma. Um, I think I always think back one of the things I remember about back then was we had a pretty large group of students that were considered still enrolled. Mm -hmm. And those were the kind of like the fifth year seniors that I mentioned earlier. And a lot of that was just, we weren't tracking well enough and helping kids understand that like, we really don't want you sticking around in high school forever. <laughs> like we want you to come to high school, enter ninth grade and then graduate within four years and then mm -hmm. go on and continue your education or enter the workforce or whatever it is. Um, so, yeah, there, there are lots of great um, tools that people can use, um, and it's right there on their website. And one thing I would ask, uh, I always try to give people an option to reach out to someone specifically, and that's some great information. But if someone, a parent or a high school student, and I know in their school, they, their co first contact might be their guidance counselor or their administrator, but uh, would there be another contact information that either one of you or both might suggest, maybe an email address or a phone number, that we could put on the screen that uh, people might could reach out to? I mean, they're always welcome to call the district yeah. office and um, put them in touch with one, you know, okay. Renee or myself. Or and, that, and that number is 386-329-0538, and it's on our website. And you could ask for um, someone to give them information about graduation rates, and more than likely they'd put them in contact with Renee or Jonathan or somebody on your staff. Yeah. Yeah. So that's very helpful. I do want to conclude by saying, um, and I've said this a number of times, I've given a number of presentations around the United States because I think people uh, outside of Putnam County have realized that we have had a major focus on graduation rates. And I think we saw back in the year 1415 
that it was actually a detriment that the low percentage, which is around 54.9%, was really a concern about a lot of our, uh, our businesses and people trying to get development to come in, that that was kind of a hurdle. And they came to the school district and said, we need for you to really focus on that. And to Jonathan's credit, and I know he worked very closely with Tanya Whitehurst and, and really developed a system where we look at graduation rates from kindergarten to 12th grade. It's not just a high school endeavor. And I know without going into a lot of detail, we really focus on that data and we focus on some of the early warning signs and really those transitional years. And uh, to your credit, um, our entire district's credit, we've, we've really made some remarkable gains. The high point being in 2021 when we had a graduation rate of 92.5. And then a lot of that was uh, kind of related to the pandemic. Yeah. But we are still above the state average, and I'm very proud of that. Not only is it the district rate, but we're all, I'm also very proud of our subgroup rate. We, yeah. we really have made some gains with each of our subgroups. So, again, that's a whole other conversation, but I just want to say a lot of work has gone into, you know, uh, making that a focus of our district. Very proud of that. But it's very important for the people watching this to understand what's behind calculating that rate. And y'all provided a lot of that detail today. So I want to thank both of you for being here today and taking time away from your position. And uh, the main thing we're, we're focusing on is we just want our students to graduate on time and when they cross that stage, we want them to have a successful future in uh, college, career, life, right? Right. So thank you both for being here, and uh, look forward to seeing you in our next podcast.